Good morning. Uh, this is Bob Krause, and I'm here in Destin, Florida, and we're vi visiting the Hyperbaric Oxygen Treatment Center. Uh, this is a special treatment for uh, people with post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury. And while we're here, we're going to see Dr. Eddie Zan. Uh, Eddie is going to talk to us about what he does, why he does it, and what kind of treatments, uh, that, uh, what his success rate is, uh, the number of people that are impacted. Uh, we're going to learn as much about this treatment methodology as we can. Yeah, Jean Marie Hi, is, uh, is uh, the nurse for this. They're both nurses. Both nurses. Okay. I'm sorry. I started doing hyperbarics, which I've done for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I got interested in the brain issue of the military when that became obvious that there was a problem there. And one of my friends was the command surgeon. We have two huge military bases here. One's a special operations base, mm -hmm. and he was their command surgeon. And uh, a couple of his guys got blown up in Iraq in an up armored vehicle, but they still suffered IED, TBI, and all that stuff, injury. There was an article in the paper about these two guys getting purple hearts, but they'd been injured, they still had brain injury, they got lost, they couldn't remember anything and all that stuff, and I said, hell, they've got TBI. It's called mild traumatic brain injury, concussion. So I called my command surgeon friend, who was a full bird out at the uh, air base, and I said, have you read the paper? He said, no. I said, I read it, a couple of you guys in there, call me back. He said, hell, let's treat them. I said, sure. So we did, and they were being boarded out of the medicine, and both of their boards were rescinded when we got through. They went on to serve another four or five years, and we published an article uh, that, about those two guys, a case report, kind of the gold standard, way back, gosh, 10, 11, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've just become interested in it since then. Now, we've treated probably 30 veterans, and maybe got paid for two, the rest of them were on my nickel which was fine because I just wanted to do it. I could afford to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been very rewarding. But I think now that the military is coming around the VA, that uh, we, that all this counseling and all this stuff they've been doing, it doesn't work. It doesn't yeah, work. not for TBI. Because uh, hyperbaric is the only thing that actually addresses the brain. The others just treat symptoms. The hyperbaric actually repairs the damaged brain, and there's a lot of signs. Mm -hmm. uh, I put together a little book. Yeah, I I'll give this to you. Okay. It's got our original paper in there. It's got a paper published about, it's got a lot of stuff in there. Two years ago by LSU, North Dakota Medical School about hyperbaric for traumatic brain injury, PTSD. And this is an article just got published last week. Uh, there was several institutes went together and we pulled our data. It's called the National Brain Rescue Study Multis Observation of Mild Traumatic Brain Injury Post Concussion. And there's my name right there, it's one of the authors. So mm -hmm. there, there's a lot out there, so you have all that. Yeah, now I'm just going to put the, uh, I'm going to put the, this document up here so uh, Vicki can take a, a quick picture of this. Oh, you, you mm -hmm. have that. Yeah, and we will do it. Uh, but I have this with your stuff here. And, and then, that uh, just got published last week. Yeah, and this is a new one. And so basically you're telling me that uh, you were probably the first in the country that was doing this. Oh, I don't, I don't think so. I think there were other people. Mm -hmm. maybe. But we got certainly got involved with the military side of it. There's mm -hmm. a guy in New Orleans that's been doing a lot of work for a mm -hmm. long time, Dr. Harsh, he's very good. Yeah. But, I, yeah, we were sort of early on. We mm -hmm. were. So. Yeah. Now, in, when you do these, and uh, uh, Dr. Zant, you were saying that uh, your average PTSD patient is set up for 40? Well, usually 40, uh, we see them, episodes. usually they, they refer them from mild traumatic brain injury is the military term for concussion. I mean, you, they have a brain injury, but it's not a penetrating gunshot wound, where it's just a concussion glass type injury. Right. And I have 30, 40% of those guys and women, we've treated some ladies, have uh, PTSD also. What percentage of these people have had Full recovery, partial recovery. Well, they all recovery. get better, and mm -hmm. I would say probably 85% get back pretty much their normal status before their injury, and the other 15% mm -hmm. maybe not, but uh, they do get better. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you an interesting case. We have a lot. I love my patients. This one guy, he was in Iraq, he was a military police guy, and he was on a Humvee, and they took a blast. 
and he hit his head all the way down the road and uh, had severe traumatic brain injury, non-penetrating. And we finally got, we, don't, we didn't get them until six months, a year after their injury because they go to Germany, they go to Walter Reed, whatever, which is now closed. Mm -hmm. And it's never too late to treat a brain injury person. But anyway, he came in, uh, he got to our office, I can't remember who referred him. And, you know, he was a military police guy, but he was still suffering tremendous symptoms. <laughs> he got in trouble with the law a couple of times. They, traumatic brain injury, they all get very irritable, upset. They fly off the you know, yeah. really easily. Migraines, etc. cetera. Yeah, they, yeah. It, people made, made him mad, road rage. He'd ran with their cars and crap like that, you know. Great mm -hmm. guy. And you tell him to go out there and put in the parking lot, put a hand on a tree, put his hand on a car, crap like that. Mm -hmm. So we treated him. He got better. And I tried to keep up with my guys. I kind of lost track of him. And I guess probably, hell, six, nine months ago, I was in one of the local supermarkets here. I got a tap on the shoulder and I looked around. I recognized, I couldn't remember his name. It had been four or five years. And he said, are you Dr. Sam? I said, yeah. I said, I know who you are, but I can't remember your name. And he told me, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing? Because when I last saw him, I mean, he was severely injured. He said, I'm doing great. I'm back to work. Everything's fine. I said, all right. And he was a military police guy. Now, I said, really? He said, now I remember that you weren't doing so well. You know, you were getting better, but... And I said, well, what kind of work you do? He said, I got the best job in the world. I said, what is that? He said, I'm a federal marshal. I said, whoa, wait a minute now. They let you have a gun again? He said, oh, yeah. So he made a complete recovery. So, Thank goodness. That is fascinating. And we have an yeah. Army general that we treated that uh, was injured at that. Uh, it, it, his testimony was in there. He's also a judge, got blown in Afghanistan. And uh, he had really, for a year, he just couldn't do anything. And we treated him and went back. But, and, to his judgeship after a year he was able to do that. He just retired last year. So it's quite rewarding. I, I love my military Plato. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, so the first person that you did this with, if you've been thirty or forty so far, uh yeah, probably was, somewhere around there. Yeah, so it probably made what, two thousand five, two thousand six? I'm guessing. I think the article that we published was 2009. 2009, 2009. is when we published the article. Okay, so it was uh, somewhere before then. Yeah. That's the case. That, to me, that's the current one. What does it say? 2009. Okay. So probably it's a year earlier than that. Okay, 2008 is when you first did yeah, your stuff. Yeah, probably got really yeah. into this. Yeah. And uh, now, since you know the VA has only paid for two of these. Uh, they paid for these guys, they TRICARE did, and then they realized, right. hey, we shouldn't have paid for those, so they, that was the end of that. Hmm. Hyperbaric, there are, there are about 14 conditions, Medicare sets the guideline, and whatever Medicare mm -hmm. approved, that's what the other insurance companies follow suit, mm -hmm. and no neurocognitive issues are included in that list except carbon monoxide toxins, and that is covered. But other than that, uh, strokes and stuff like that. Just because they're covered doesn't mean they don't respond to hyperbaric. They're just not on the magic list to be paid for. Mm -hmm. So that's, we, we treated, uh, oh gosh, one guy, I think the Marine Corps paid for his uh, treatments. And then we had a Green Beret Foundation that paid for one. Mm -hmm. And that's about it, really. The rest of them have been on our nickel. So VA is not paid for one. And DOD paid for one accidentally. TRICARE paid for one. TRICARE yes, yeah. paid for yeah. one. Yeah. So, 2008, and you were doing this, and literally everything has been either free to the veteran from some other source, perhaps you, or a foundation, but no government. No, no, uh, no, no foundation is paid. It's either been the TRICARE, the Green Beret, Marine Corps, and that's it. That's it. And we have a little foundation we set up that people do donate to that we've used mm -hmm. to pay for a couple of these guys. In fact, one of them right yeah. now is being paid for. I'm starting to hear from burn pit lung people in, uh, uh, in the, uh, the outreach that I do. Uh, is there value in something like this, say from a, a firefighter or somebody that's been around uh, well, toxic exposures? Yeah, if they treat smoke inhalation with hyperbaric, that's really not on the list of covered conditions. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. The fire people, they know I have the chambers here and I would be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you talk about your fire pit thing. I've never been involved in anything like that. Nothing like that at all. Nobody's ever approached me about it. But Yeah. Uh, we have a lady down in, uh, uh, down in Orlando that we're working with. 
And if I can get some, uh, you know, contributions or something like that, she might be one that we would uh, refer to you for something like yeah. that. So, but uh, in terms of the VA opening the door to these uh, TBI people uh, and PTSD people, uh, you see that door opening? How do you see it opening? I, I, my general friend, I talked to him the other day, I, he told me, I have not seen this in writing, that the special operations units, I guess worldwide, are now telling whoever is in charge that they want their traumatic brain injury people treated with hyperbaric. So that's a big deal. Oh yeah. If that pans out, that would, I mean, there we're talking hundreds of thousands of people, not just a few thousand. Oh yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's it, it explosive. Well, if the military opens the door for active duty people. Well, uh, this lieutenant commander is going to treat his active duty and the major were treated, but most of them, have been boarded out of, of the military because yeah. they cannot function and they're mm -hmm. in the VA system. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, think, I think that's yeah. changing and uh, I hope so because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have three chambers here and I have three in Fort Walton and we mm -hmm. can expand. I mean, hell, we own this whole, we rent this building, we don't own this building, so we've got mm -hmm. plenty of room to expand mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Now, uh, just to, to get a, a visual and I, I don't want you to give away information you feel is confidential, uh, but uh, the cost involved, because you got 40 treatments. No, I don't, no I'll tell you that, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Uh, insurance companies pay, we, you never know, 350 uh, per treatment, up to four or $500 per treatment, something, mm -hmm. not all the time. Our cost to give a treatment is around $185, $188, and then, mm -hmm. If someone is private pay, now we treat a lot of people other than military private pay, but there are stroke patients and things like that, Lyme disease, and we charge them 185 bucks, our cost. 70% mm -hmm. of our patients are covered by insurance, the 30% are not. The 70% are covered by insurance, pays the bills. And the other 30% that we charge 185, 190 bucks, that's just to cover our expenses with. Okay, well that's, that's uh, I, I have a friend in Atlanta Mm -hmm. works for a hospital up there. He's also a certified uh, hyperbaric engineer type guy. Every year we pay him a lot of money to come down and certify our chambers. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the hospital he worked in. What said, what, what do y'all charge per dive up there? We call them dives, treatments. He said, we're up to 4,500 treatments. That's a lot. $4,500 That's what per they it. one hour block? Yeah, uh, that may be for an hour and a half for yeah. a burn, not burn, but diabetic ulcers and things like that. Mm -hmm. He said, that's what we build insurance companies for. I don't know what they collect, but that, they're, I mean, that would, $4,500 just about cover the 40 treatments here. So nobody uh, out in the insurance world in it, then, or the government has really dealt with it enough to uh, standardize a, a reimbursement pricing is what you're saying right now. Well, it's just not a covered condition. I mean, yeah. once it's mm -hmm. covered, I mean, I participate with every insurance company. I take Medicare, Medicaid, tri I take everything. But mm -hmm. it's just hyperbaric for traumatic brain injury is not on their list. So mm -hmm. once it's on their list, I mean, we're already in network with these insurance companies. We'll just start billing them. So whatever they want to pay, mm -hmm. they pretty much pay what they want to pay. So you say that the, the hyperbaric industry is ready and able. It's already here. Well, there are a lot of people that do what I do. We're, we're mm -hmm. ready to go. And, um, mm -hmm. Just, uh, well, this past week, the president of the Hyperbaric Medical Association it was acting down here for a week. Hmm. And uh, their, their organization's geared up, ready to go also. And I did send them an email uh, last night, so. Oh, I did? Yeah. Yeah, so eventually I'll, I'll get it by the time I'm back in Iowa, I'm yeah. sure. But yeah, he was down here on vacation for a yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Now, how many, uh, so you're in it, uh, I know the, the, the president of the International Association is in it. How many facilities do you think there are within the United States? Well, I know there's one in South Florida, a friend of mine, Ray Crowley, he, he does what we do. Uh, Dr. Harsh over in New Orleans does it. Uh, I have a friend up in Canada named Tom Fox. He has a facility in Canada. He's American though. Mm -hmm. And they treat, actually I think they treat some of the Canadian troops that have been injured over there. Mm -hmm. And there, there are a few other places, I'm not sure who all they are. But yeah.
But uh, you start, uh, started uh, doing stuff here in 2009 where you publicized the treatment and such. Well, the, the, the uh, traumatic brain injury, yeah. The TBI. Uh, where did the resistance come from? Uh, the costs or otherwise? I don't know if there was any resistance. It just wasn't publicized. You know, people didn't know about it. And uh, we published this paper, and then Dr. Mm -hmm. Harsh just published a lot of stuff. But, you know, the word gets out. I mean, mm -hmm. these guys that get injured, they're a tight knit group. I mean, they're always talking, they mail in and all, and they mm -hmm. mail in, we'll find out something. And so once we treated uh, these two guys, the word kind of got out, people would call. and Say, so sure, you know, come on down, we'll, we'll yeah. take care of you. Well, the number of people with uh, even mild TBI, which can still be, you know, uh, dangerous. You oh, know, it, when you uh, say mild, it's not a mild. Nobody it's a, has mild. It's, it's a severe rated. disease. Mild means yeah. they don't have a gunshot wound in the brain. Yeah. But these people, I mean, they're totally incapacitated. Totally yeah. incapacitated. If, if you add them all up, I think it's... Uh, over 200,000 veterans. I think the, I think the Rand Senate. Corporation said it was more like three or 400,000. 300, 400. So my number is low. That's probably, I'm sure. Uh, and see, and the big crazy. deal is the suicide yeah. rate that these mm -hmm. people get the PTSD, they get depressed. Mm -hmm. And I think the last number I saw, I think it's 25, mm -hmm. 29 a day are committing suicide. So the real outrage is that we've had, we, we have a known treatment. And it's been in existence for at least 10 years. And uh, we've got uh, 200 to 400,000 people uh, knocking at the door saying, let me in, let me in, and uh, the VA and the United States government is not letting them in. See, this study that was mm -hmm. done at LSU, it's a better study of production of suicide ideation from HVOT. We found that to be true also. So that's, yeah, that's, I've seen that in my work. It's out oh, there. I mean, yeah. it's not a secret. Yeah, no, it's, and, and it, they, they, they turn into daisy chains. Uh, a guy that we know uh, in a different episode, uh, uh, he was in a battalion, uh, uh, an artillery uh, battalion in Afghanistan, and he came back and then six months, uh, 18 members of his uh, battalion had committed suicide. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, he tried and failed and then was getting ready to try again and it uh, ultimately caused a terrible injury to his wife. We have some testimony. I have some testimony on our website in here, mm -hmm. and the best testimony really is written by the wife of one of these guys. Yeah, this is uh, this is important because uh, what you're doing shows the art of the possible for those you know 400,000 people out there that uh, that need help, and uh, an 85 percent success rate. Uh, well, I'd say yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, they all, they all mm -hmm. got better. I mean, mm -hmm. some of them, like these two guys that were being boarded out, they, they went back in and finished mm -hmm. their tour of duty or whatever it was, mm -hmm. and uh, they just get life back, you know? They, mm -hmm. the, the guys that I see, mostly, they would come in, they'd have a, a handful of pills. What do you tell Well, there's 15 pills here, one for sleep and anxiety and depression, headache, just stuff. And then, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how much often they would say, I feel like a zombie. I'm in a brain fog with all these medications, and that's mm -hmm. that's a problem. Yeah. And uh, most of them, when they finished a the hyperbaric, they were off 90% of those drugs. They didn't need them anymore. Mm -hmm. Veterans National Recovery Center uh, with uh, Dr. Eddie Sant, who's a pioneer in hyperbaric pressure treatment and its uh, its use with uh, TBI and PTSD veterans. Uh, thank you for your time watching this and have a great day.